10th, 1999, the entertainment capital of the world's center stage was the Gladiators Gridiron at Memorial Field. The annual crosstown clash between the Burbank Bulldogs and the John Burroughs Indians would be the last of the 20th century. 51 years of battling for the bragging rights, a half century of full contact adolescent aggression, a rivalry that began four years after the end of World War II would culminate this century on the eve of Veterans Day. Going into the contest, the series stood at 31 wins for the Indians and 19 for the Bulldogs. There had never been a tie, and if that record held, one of these teams would win its first league game of the season, while the other would end the year winless in league play. Regardless of where either team was going into the big game, the Burbank Burroughs confrontation has always been one for the history books. In the post-war 1940s, the economy and babies boomed, and Burbank built a new high school. The 1940s belonged to the Burbank Bulldogs as they handed their neophyte crosstown counterparts a 12-7 defeat in 1949. With that first game in the last year of the decade, the rivalry had begun. In the 1950s, as the Cold War heated up, so did the battle for Burbank. The two teams split the series five games apiece. As turmoil raged in Southeast Asia and domestic assassins murdered American heroes, the Burbank Bulldogs had their last dominant decade, winning six of the ten games. The 1970s were tough on American embassy personnel in Iran and tough on the Burbank Bulldogs. The Burroughs Indians won the decade eight games to two, took the lead in the series, and never looked back. The 1980s brought us the Reagan Revolution and Soviet dissolution. We also saw Burbank High beat its crosstown rival three straight years, 1983, 84, and 85. For a short time, it looked like morning in America for the Bulldogs. Unfortunately for them, those were the only three wins in the big game that decade. The Indians won seven, the Bulldogs just the three. The decade of Bill Clinton, Bill Gates, the internet, and the intern unfolded as Burroughs delivered another seven wins for the record books. Burbank had two. On November 10th, 1999, with one more game to go, Burroughs, in fact, was vying for its seventh consecutive win to cap off the 1990s with another eight-victory decade. The Bulldogs, on the other hand, were hell-bent on ending the century by ending the streak. The race to end the century in heavenly bliss began with Hell Week. The August tradition of sun-soaked conditioning of the mind and body found the Burbank Bulldogs eager and full of hope. Go! 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 Turn up, turn up, turn up! Kick it. For the Indian summer over at John Burroughs High School, Hell Week included dodging footballs. Boo, 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 boo. 
As players stretched, coaches' precision punts landed precariously all over the practice field. Yeah. Hey, here's the goal line right here, guys. And let him go up the It was a week filled with everything from wind sprints to getting up to speed on the nuances of the special teams. Go 15 yards. Bring it back, bring it back. During the second week of September, the Indians and the Bulldogs kicked off the high school football equivalent of the preseason. The handful of non-league games ahead of them would be a good indication of things to come and invaluable preparation for a very tough Foothill League schedule. Heading into league competition, the Burbank Bulldogs finished non-league play with one win and four losses, while the Burroughs Indians ended up with two wins and three losses. Both teams remained optimistic about their chances in league play, even though three of the other four Foothill League teams were ranked in the top ten in a CIF Southern Section Division III preseason poll. The Saugus Centurions at number six, the Valencia Vikings at number five, and the powerhouse Hard Indians were projected to be the top team in the division. The two Burbank teams' league opponents all hail from the football craze Santa Clarita Valley, where the sport is more popular than Magic Mountain, and the only amusement comes from punishing the opposition. And that's just what happened in their four league games against their pigskin-possessed Santa Clarita opponents. Both Burbank teams went 0 for 4. In week one, the Bulldogs traveled the Canyon country to take on the Cowboys. The young Burbank team found itself down by 21 points before putting two points on the board with a safety late in the second quarter. When Burbank scored its first and only touchdown in the third quarter, it was the closest they'd come to the Cowboys, who racked up 440 yards rushing. The Bulldogs lost their inaugural league outing 49-8. For the Indians, the league opener was just as challenging against the Valencia Vikings and their UCLA-bound running back Manuel White, who scored four touchdowns. Burroughs' big star, quarterback Joe Proles, was seeing stars by the time it was all over. He was sacked four times, intercepted four times, and fumbled twice. In the end, it was Valencia 64 and the Indians 8. In week two, it was Burbank High's turn to face all-world running back Manuel White with their own Bulldog backfield, battlefield weapon, all-area running back Alan Gutierrez. Thank you! You got to be joking me! The guy was out of bounds! Oh, give me a break! Gutierrez did turn the ball over once, but he also gained 68 yards rushing. Manuel White, meantime, gained 274 yards on the ground and scored seven touchdowns. The Vikings discovered victory in a big way with a merciless trouncing of the Bulldogs, 70 to seven. At Memorial Field, it was the Indians hosting the Indians. No pilgrims on hand and no Thanksgiving niceties. The Hard Indians, the division's number one ranked football team, were not invincible, but not beatable either. Burroughs QB Joe Kroll's passed for 140 yards and two TDs, including this 13-yarder to Randy Beckman. But it was too little too late as the Indians fell to the Indians, 41 to 18. The Burroughs Indians came alive in week three against the weakest Santa Clarita team in the Foothill League, the Canyon Cowboys. Early on in their contest, Joe Kroll's connected with a food poisoning weakened Randy Beckman for a 25-yard touchdown. Along with Kroll's and Beckman, running back Spencer Stewart also performed well, rushing for 70 yards on just six carries. The Indians had the game in the bag until last-minute turnovers cost them the game 23-20 as they fell to 0-3 in the Foothill League. 
The Bulldogs also found themselves at 0-3 following their home game against the Saugus Centurions. Saugus quarterback David Parker completed 16 of 30 passes for 225 yards and three touchdowns, also adding a rushing touchdown to those statistics. The Bulldogs weren't without their highlights, but when it was all over, the Centurions proved too much for the Bulldogs, defeating them 48-12. In week four of league play, it was the Indians' turn to battle Saugus on the Centurions' home field. Coming off a heartbreaking defeat the previous Friday night against a weaker opponent, you might have expected the Indians to get crushed. That simply was not the case. The Indians turned in a solid offensive performance, scoring nearly as many points in this game as they had in their other three league games combined. But the Indians lost 48 to 40 and headed into the battle for Burbank, their fifth and last league game of the season, at no wins and four losses in the Foothill League. The Bulldogs played their last Santa Clarita Valley opponent at home. Unfortunately, it was against the number one ranked team in the division. As always, Burbank could count on a courageous performance out of running back Alan Gutierrez. The 6'1", 210-pound senior carried the ball 19 times for 108 yards. The 56-7 defeat was the last the Bulldogs would see of the boys from up Interstate 5. Their focus was now on their crosstown rival. The 51st Battle for Burbank, the last big game of the century. Go! Go! It was short shirts and helmets for the Bulldogs as they held their last practice of the century, some 26 hours before the big game's kickoff. For the first time in 51 years, the game would be played on Wednesday night due to the Veterans Day holiday, which fell on Thursday, November 11th. So it was a short week of practice to cap off a very long season. We're going to give them a great game. They, they shouldn't uh, discount us at all. They should. They should be practicing hard. They should be practicing right now, full pads. Flex left, 82 pads, off shot, off shot. The whole team's been practicing really hard. We're gonna go give it our best shot, and I know we're gonna come up on top. They do have some speed, so our coaches have pretty much prepared us for this game, so I think if, as long as we get good, quick, fast drops, I think we'll be there. Off shot, off shot. All I know is I just wanna beat them for my last year, and. I don't know, I'm just taking it easy, thinking about the game a lot, trying not to do anything stupid. Get on him, get on him! Yeah! They think that, you know, they're going to come in and tear it up, and I just, I don't think that's going to happen. The point is, is they're coming in already won. They've already won, according to them. So, pride game, boys, pride game. I mean, I've already got butterflies. I know it's going to be a great game. Uh, all of the seniors, we got to play our best in, in order for us to stand any chance. And uh, we hope to inspire the younger players. They're going to taunt you and taunt you and taunt you. This game means everything to me. For the past four years, I've never had a good season and I never beat Burles. Beat Burles on three! One, two, three! Beat Burles! Wednesday night, the stands will be packed, people will be screaming and yelling, and it's, it's an actual football game. And uh, just the atmosphere and the excitement of the game is just tremendous. The Burroughs Indians practiced into Tuesday night. They were confident, but Coach Noop was taking nothing for granted. They have a great running back in uh, uh, Gutierrez. Uh, I think he's got over 1,000 yards rushing so far this year after the Hart game last week. Um, and it, it's going to be our goal to try to stop him. I think we could probably beat him uh, Pretty, pretty soundly, maybe two or three touchdowns. We're going to win, basically. And the reason being? Because we're better. Oh! You get smacked in the mouth, I would say. Honest. That's what I'm going to do. Daniel, bump out over there. Safety, come in the middle. Psychologically, you know, we know that their record is the same as ours. And no matter what, they're, they're going to come out and play it as hard as they can, you know, so we gotta come out do the same, wanna win. Jose, hop out, quickly! They look like they're a pretty good team. We need to be prepared and not take them too softly because they might come back and hurt us at the end. entertainment we had today, cheerleaders, the band, the hip-hop club. The first thing I want to know from the crowd 
Okay, are you guys ready to come tonight and witness a beating of the Bulldogs tonight? In the complete history of the game, uh, Burroughs has scored 997 points against Burbank. Tonight, we go well over 1,000 points against Burbank Bulldogs. Finally, the night of the big game, the 51st battle for Burbank and the 1999 homecoming for the Bulldogs and the Indians. And the band that played the homecoming theme as I caressed your cheek. Both Burbank and Burroughs honored a homecoming king and queen before the game, but when the night was over, only one team would be wearing the crown of victory. Although both teams were on the field they call home, Burbank High was the home team this year, so their fans got to sit on the better lighted side of the stadium. Memorial Field was overflowing with more than 7,000 parents, students, alumni, and football fans. You've got 12 seniors out there that are gonna give it their all because this is their game. This is their last game for many of them. And they'd like to go out as winners. The spectacular pregame fireworks show was a harbinger of the show that was about to come as Burroughs won the coin toss and set up shop at their own 17-yard line. It didn't look good for the Bulldogs when on the first play from scrimmage Indian QB Joe Krolls connected with an unlikely target, wide receiver and punter Jonathan Overturf. Not counting a two-point conversion later in the game, it was the junior's only catch of the night, but it was good for a game-high 83 yards and a 6-0 Burroughs lead. The Indian fans were feeling confident as a blowout looked imminent. Suddenly, junior quarterback Romeo Judy began picking up yards on the option. Then all-area running back Alan Gutierrez exploded for a 15-yard run to the 15. He is a freight train, my man. He is the man. With five minutes to go in the first quarter, Indians coach Keith Noop looked on as Romeo Judy ran it in from six yards out. The PAT was blocked, but the rivalry had heated up again, and Burroughs' six-game winning streak was in jeopardy. That's Scout's fault! Hey, come on, stick with our duties! Excellent job, excellent job! That's what I want to see! Break! You guy made the table, push him out of the pocket! Come on, Gus! We're going to block down, in, and around. Hey, Bess! Bess! Regular, regular! The Indians mounted their resurgence in the air and on the ground. Running back Spencer Stewart picked up 30 yards here on his way to a game-high 96 yards on 11 carries. I want to go load, slot, split, four counter. Crowell's then connected with senior standout Randy Beckman, who was headed for a huge statistical night. 
But stats weren't going to help this particular drive as Crowles was stopped short of a first down and the Bulldogs began to believe this was their year. Their visions of taking the lead were shattered when Judy and Gutierrez fumbled a handoff and the Indians' Daniel hit recovered deep in Bulldog territory. Do not let him get behind you! Joe Crowles used the opportunity to again hook up with Randy Beckman late in the second quarter. The Indians added a two-point conversion and headed into the locker room with a 14-6 lead. Told you they're going to play you tough. They played everybody tough up to this point. Okay, it was 14-6 against Saugus. Okay, the question is, are you going to allow Burbank to keep playing tough? Nope. Let's turn up the heat. Seven. Let's lay the hat. Let's get two of them. Get, our, get the ball to the offense. Let's go. It's nothing. It's our game. You can see it in their face, baby. Come on. The Bulldogs were tired and battered, but there was no sign they were giving up. Offense is doing the job. DBs, hit somebody. You guys are sitting back in your haunches. It's the same as last week. You're getting too stinking much respect. They're going to come out and they're going to pass. And they're going to pass. And they're going to pass. You guys are better athletes than what you're showing us tonight. The Bulldog Steve LaPercio showed his athletic prowess on the kickoff to start the second half, taking it at the 15 and returning at 45 yards to the Burroughs 40. You did not hit him. Coach just told me you didn't make the end. I went in there, and then Angel hit me in the leg, and he got off. I hit him at the line of scrimmage, Coach. But well, why didn't you tackle him? Then Alan Gutierrez, on his way to 95 yards rushing on 15 carries, powered his way inside the Burroughs' 10-yard line. He can't be stopped. He can't be stopped. They can't stop him. Bulldog QB Romeo Judy, who ended up with 61 yards rushing on 20 carries and two TDs, made it 14 to 12. Then Gutierrez pounded it in for two points, and with a minute 32 elapsed in the third quarter, Burroughs and Burbank were tied at 14. You've got two personal fouls. What, I got they called you for two now. But did I get early in the first quarter. Yeah, you got early. Why are you getting those? He's hitting me one. I don't care what he's doing to you. That's, that kills us, Jackson! Because you're going hard. We'll get a fresh pair of legs in there. We go hard job, on it. Don't be upset with them. Hey, you got to get the seven yards. You're not, you're not even pushing that guy anywhere, and he's just jumping you. Okay. Seven yards. Come on. Damn it, he came in through. So close. Once the panic that had set in subsided, the Indians went on a rampage, moving the ball methodically down the field behind the running of Stewart, the passing of Krolls, and the receiving of Beckman. Spencer Stewart, on sheer will, took the ball to the Bulldog three-yard line. Great job, Spence. Yeah, you had no blockers when you got that many yards. Then sophomore sensation Michael Perez finished the job with a three-yard touchdown run. As Bulldog coach Frank Childress looked on, the Indians tried for two. Spencer Stewart found his way into the end zone, and with 4.22 left in the third quarter, Burroughs regained the lead 22-14. As the battle for Burbank raged on, both sides started to feel it. Lineman Alan Stout was hurting all over from his gut to his elbow, while Alan Gutierrez had the blood cleaned up and the wounds bandaged so he could play with pain. But Gutierrez was all but shut down in the third. That was a fast quarter. Heading into the fourth quarter, it was still anybody's ball game. But then the Indians' defense got even tougher, pinning Gutierrez and the Bulldogs deep in their own end. 
This run by 6'3", 255-pound lineman and sometimes ball carrier Oscar Giangrasso, along with a Crowles to Jarbo pass, set up Randy Beckman's second touchdown of the night. And that was all she wrote. The Indians added a TD late in the fourth quarter, 21 unanswered points to win the crosstown rivalry 35-14. And you get it on your head. The Foothill League and season finale left Burbank winless in league play, and the Burroughs Indians with their seventh straight win in the battle for Burbank. The longest streak in the 51-game history of the series, which now stands at 32-19 in favor of the Indians. Did you play the best you could? Yes, you did. Be proud of that and take that with you. And we'll come back next year and we'll be better. And we'll be better and better. But feeling sorry for yourself ain't going to do it. Because I'm not going to sit here and take it. You're a better football team than that. Believe me, I've seen what you can do. And nobody will ever talk trash about you while I'm here. Because they got to deal with me. You guys did exactly what we needed to do in the second half. Okay? I've never really lied to you about an opponent. Okay, I told you these guys, they, they, they didn't have what it took in the second half. Okay, it's not because they're not a good team and they don't play hard. Okay, just physically, they don't have it.